Do you have any regrets? Uh, well, I've, I'm going to have to do your genealogy now and trace down, see who it was that eventually produced you that was alive in my time and see if I can introduce them to my Bowie knife. Abraham That's one regret. I you're, came through Abraham you're a smooth. smoot? Yep. Yep. Oh, ho, 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 you're a smoot, eh? Well, let's have a little discussion about white privilege and a legacy of slavery, all right? If we're going to tear down my statue and, you know, accuse everybody who's living upon the excesses of my day when there was slavery, whether we needed to talk about your ancestor, Abraham Smoot, who, you know, got to his wealth on the backs of his own slaves, and then his wealth was passed down to his child, who was passed down to his child and passed down to his child. Tell me, what are you doing to stand up for your anti-racism now? Oh, oh, suddenly Samuel J. Pinson <laughs> is short for words. You know, have you donated that percentage of your personal wealth to some movement that is perhaps looking for people to do that type of reparation? You haven't, have you? No. Oh, Samuel J. Pinson is all a lot of talk when it comes to everybody else. But suddenly he's got, you know, libertarian ideals when it comes to his own personal wealth. I see how it is. Okay. Hypocrite. Oh. <laughs> Hypocrite. Oh. Are, you, are you okay there, Brigham? <laughs> oh, I'm, oh, I'm okay. How about you, Sam? How's it going? I'm good. Yeah, I, I do speak out against racism and injustice. Oh, so now you're uh, virtue work, signaling. Yeah. Now you're virtue signaling. I see. Oh, tell us I more about... I it that way. Oh, yes. Let's tell us more about how virtuous and, and right you are. Do you own pets, Sam? I do. We just got mm. a puppy. Mm. French mm. bulldog. Well, you know, being a prophet, seeing the future as I do, all of the the moral grandstanding going along right now about slavery and black people and stuff like that. Well, in 30 years, there's going to be a worldwide movement of people saying the same thing about pets and animals used for meat. And they're going to look back on Samuel J. Pinson and they're going to be like, look, he owned an animal. He was cruel and vicious and he had no moral compass at all. And then, you know, they'll get you. And so you just keep that in mind. You know, you and that, your moral gangstranding. That could happen. Uh, it does make me wonder if that really is what the future holds and it really is immoral to for me to own a pet. Why doesn't the church leadership today take a stand and publicly denounce this immoral practice? Because you have to choose your fights, Sam. You have to choose uh, your fights. Uh -huh. You know, if we start doing that, you know, what are they going to say about all our cattle ranches? Those are multi-million, nay, billion dollar investments. You know, we, we, <laughs> we're not going to cut off our nose to spite our face. We're not that stupid. <laughs> so you have to pick your battles and the battles that are at the top of the priority list today are resisting gay rights and gay marriage, as I understand it, from the church's behavior. Uh, I, this brings up a very important point, Sam. Uh, how long have you been viewing masturbation, viewing uh, pornography and <laughs> masturbation? Because clearly, the, you know, all of these questions are really just symptoms of a dark, sinful spirit. And yeah. we all know what sins, you know, they hide in the dark shadows of the smartphones these days. So, frankly, let's just shift the conversation to what it is in Samuel Pinson's life that is defunct and deficient. Because that's a well, much I'm more glad. interesting topic.